So what's the best tiny brick that you can stick on the back of your iPhone 12 or iPhone 13? Out of the dozen of wallets that I've used, these five right here are the top scores. So that's our conclusion after scoring each product against card capacity, pull force, drop test, and the number of viewing angles. Now, after I talk about those briefly, I will talk about the top five. Now, there are three other notable wallets that are kind of stuck in transit somewhere, so I'll briefly talk about those. Um, and you guys will just have to watch the channel for those reviews, because I'm excited to get them. It's just taken a really long time. If you like how Monty and I do our reviews, make sure you get all your stuff through our links. This channel is unsponsored, and I'm pretty sure I've spent over $600 on MagSafe wallets, and I'll end up just using the best one. When it comes to card capacity, most of the products allow two to three cards to be stored. Basically, the sleeker the product looks, the fewer cards it can hold. Now, up until a couple of weeks ago, the reigning champion of card capacity was the Magback wallet. It could hold five, maybe six cards if you really wanted to, but we got our Peak Design Stand wallets, and well, that's not the case anymore. Guess how many cards this little backpack for your iPhone can hold? Guess. Four, five, oh. Six, seven, oh, eight. It can comfortably hold eight cards, but getting to those cards is gonna to be tougher than other products. There aren't any cutouts like you would find on the Magback wallet or the Apple leather wallet, so you have to pick at the edges of the cards. Now, another thing we do have to mention about the Magback wallet is that it does have a card separator, which is handy for the one or two cards that you use on a daily basis. Now, after those high capacity wallet monsters, the Spigen Valentius, Pop Wallet Plus, Moft, and Apple leather wallet all carry three cards and the rest only carry two. Next up is Pull Force. Now, certain companies really like to market their products based on pull force. <coughs> and as much as we tried, we couldn't recreate their results, mostly because we're viewers, not people trying to sell you stuff. Now, to do the pull force testing, we slapped a three-man command strip and hook on each wallet and pulled it using a force meter. We did this several times for each wallet and took the average of the readings. The toughest wallet to pull off was the Pop Wallet Plus, which makes sense given the Pop Socket design. After the Pop Wallet Plus was the Magback Wallet, which again makes sense given the finger loop. Products that round out the top five in terms of pull force include the Peak Stand Wallet, the Spigen Rugged Armor, and the Apple Leather Wallet. The worst pull force came from the case of five wallets. It just came off so easily, it didn't even register on the force meter. So that's pull force. What's next, Monty? Drop testing? Drop force? Drop force testing? Basically, we dropped an iPhone with each wallet to figure out what height the wallet comes off. The wallet that forced us to leave the most dense in our hardwood floor was the Pop Wallet Plus, at a massive drop height of 10.5 centimeters or four-ish inches. Now chuckle all you want about the height because certain products come off around an inch, like the Peak product. It's quite wild that a product with a decent pull force number um, suffers incredibly with dropping it. I'm guessing that the finish of the back of the wallet comes into play as the Pop Wallet Plus has a rubber coating on the underside that increases the friction between the wallet, whereas the Peak product has fabric, which doesn't do much against the back of an iPhone. Is it better with the Peak case? A little bit. Now rounding out the top five for drop force is the Mouse Wallet, Apple Leather Wallet, Magback Wallet, and the Spigen Smart Fold. Now as a side note, the mode for all these wallets in terms of drop height is 6.5 centimeters. So it's really not that that much. All right, let's talk about products that will help us with our craned neck and because we spend all this time looking at our devices like this. So it's not a secret, I'm a big fan of MagSafe. With these wallets, designers have intelligently added ways to your iPhone. Out of this group, there are only five that actually provide you with different ways to view your iPhone. The product with the most viewing angles is the Moft Stand Plus wallet with three different viewing angles. Moft claims that you can also use the MagSafe charger between the wallet and the iPhone, but that setup has the structural integrity of a twice used wet paper towel. Next is the Peak Stand Wallet with two-ish angles of viewing. Now I say two-ish because the Peak Stand Wallet has a hinge, so it provides an infinite amount of viewing angles, well, with the landscape and portrait orientations. Next up would be the Spigen Smart Fold with two viewing angles and the Pop Wallet Plus with one. Now the Magback Wallet does have two viewing angles, but those angles only work with their case, so we kind of bump them behind the Pop Wallet Plus because you have to use a case with it. Now I'll be honest with you, I was actually really excited excited to uh, get this Spigen Smart Fold wallet. It looks incredibly slick, very, very svelte, but like most things that look svelte, it's not that useful. The flap actually doesn't always align, so you'll end up having the product sit like this, which is kind of annoying. And the stand functionality, this is the biggest kicker for me, is that it doesn't work 
with the bigger iPhones. No matter how I fold it, this way is okay, but portrait mode, yeah. Your SOL. Now there are three wallets that I'm currently waiting for. The first is the Belroy Mod Phone Case Plus Wallet, which is a Case Plus Wallet alternative. This looks like a very unique product, expensive, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. I have no idea when it's gonna show up. Next up is the Mag Easy Wallet 2 Pro by Pataka. I've been using a normal Mag Easy wallet for a couple of years now, and it's great because it's just a really easy way to keep all your most used cards separated and easily accessible. So being able to stick it to my phone is gonna make it even better, right? I hope so, we'll find out. Last is the MagSafe Speed Case Wallet from the Frenchy Co. Now I ordered this at the beginning of November. I have no idea where it is, though I'm technically still outside the 45 to 60 day shipping window. Oh my gosh. So look for those reviews as I get them over the next couple of months. All right, so after all that, here's our top five. And I'll also include the full list down in the description section. Number five goes to the Peak Design Stand Wallet. The biggest knock against this product is the drop height. It comes off incredibly easily off a bare iPhone. Now the story is completely different if you use it with the Peak case. So if you need massive amount of card capacity, go all in with Peak. Number four goes to the Apple Leather Wallet. This is the slimmest of the top five and stays on better than most of the other products in this video. One of the things that does separate it from the run of the mill wallet case is that the newer versions have Find My baked into the wallet, which is nice. Number three goes to the Moth Stampless Wallet. I've got several reservations about this product, so do check out that full review video. We've done the Stamp Plus Wallet by itself, as well as the Snap Case. If you don't mind the wallet coming off easier than others, this isn't a terrible product to get. The runner up in our top five list is the Magback Wallet. The high card capacity, coupled with the added finger loop functionality, makes this a very functional product. If you want to maximize the full potential of your wallet, you will, however, need to get a Magback Case. Why? Well, remember the viewing angle section? The best MagSafe wallet product that I've used is the Pop Wallet Plus. It's one of the most useful accessories I've used as a reviewer in the last nine years. The pop socket on the back is rock solid and allows me to carry cards like it just it doesn't come off easily, it's just so useful. And it works with every MagSafe case that I've used. So guys, that's all I got for this video. My Belroy case finally came and I am very impressed with this product. It's not a comparable product to all the other MagSafe wallets that I've reviewed in this uh, video, uh, but this is the first time out of like the dozen Bellroy products that I've bought in the last few years that I am excited to review. Usually they just get lost in the pile of cases that I have uh, down over here, but this Bellroy thing, this is pretty good. Uh, first time watching my videos, do subscribe, hit the notification bell so that every single time I produce a review, you get notified. If you want to get your stuff through my Amazon links, that would be greatly appreciated because this video is not sponsored. So I buy everything myself. And that's kind of all I got. Oh, if you want to support us even more, check out our Patreon. Patreon. Apparently I've been saying that wrong.